All right, see we're ready to go. Um, I'm TKY619, and today I bring you Blaster Master 02. Uh, recently actually released back in March um, of this year. Uh, it's a continuation from Blaster Master 01. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much just to give a quick rough on the story. Pretty much um, at the end of the last one, um, the, the mutant virus that um, our co pilot Eve had is still with her, and it's our, we're aiming to try and get her back. So, we're going to take a journey across the different planets to try and get her back to health. Right, so. We will begin in a sec. Uh, time actually starts from the moment I skip the first text box, so I'll give a countdown at that screen. So let me just hit game start. And we are pretty much on our way. All right, so if we're ready, it'll be three, two, one, go. Right, so... um. Here we go on our first island, um, Flossante. I'll probably mispronounce that wrong. Um, this area is um, pretty much um, platform orientated. Uh, there's going to be several sections or several parts of the um, of the map where there's going to be these um, blocks of arenas with um, green crystal in them, which we need to um, hit and destroy to um, create the platforms that we need to advance. Uh, it's actually quite a bit of a time loss if you take a fall anywhere within the arena within this section, just because of the fall damage. Well, not the fall damage, sorry, just the amount of falling that can happen. So let's just not fall at least. Wow, what, I'm missing a lot of shots here. All right, so I'm pretty much past the majority of um, this platforming section. All right, so the game is split up into two sections. The tank sections like so, and character sections, where we'll take this more of an overhead view. All right, so just going to pick up a bit of weapon energy, and the main gimmick of this area is these um, platforms that could that have these um, green little crystals across them. We need to hit them into the right gap so we can actually progress forward. Uh, some of the blocks actually where the crystals are on them can be RNG, so it's sort of a case of working with what I can to the best of my ability. Also stocking up on, on a bit of weapon energy as well. Uh, with this game as well, you have a new mechanic which is the counter. In, there's two counters in the game. Uh, that first one, if you get it right, it fires off a shot and it does nudge you up a little bit more. And another mechanic, or another thing that's added to this, is the um, being able to bind weapons to certain buttons to help speed things up. So we've got the first boss up here, uh, Mokrantula. Now, a lot of bosses at least have one weakness. Some actually have multiple. And if you can hit them with more than one, it will put them in a double stun state, which will weaken their defenses and keep them stunned a little bit longer. And then you can pretty much just make mincemeat of them. And right, well, we actually crash landed on this planet because our hover mechanic uh, malfunctioned. We now have that back. So now we could actually hover around again, which is always good. Right, so intentionally I'm letting my weapon energy deplete completely because the thing with this is the tank itself is known as the Ga or has what's known as the Gaia system. When you take a high fall, it will give you some weapon energy replenishment, as well as um, when you fully run out, it will replenish slowly over time. So we are able to use that to our advantage to know where to run out of weapon energy, and then obviously where to replenish it in good succession to um, optimize the time as best as we can. So that's Cernfla Santa done as we will now move over to our next planet. How are you doing, Eve? You doing fine? Yeah, she's fine. Right, so second planet, um, Montage. Takes a bit more of a, um, like, samurai theme, I'd say. Um, one of the gimmicks around here is there's going to be, like, these bamboo shoot walls that will pop up, but they don't trigger until you're actually close to them. So being able to get through this optimally is just basically knowing where they can pop up and how best to um, get around the back of them. Um, the two varieties, the green ones that will just come up and stay up, and those orange ones where you need to hit a, um, a switch in order to, well, deactivate them and be able to move forward. Oh, let's watch out there. So yeah, there's another orange one there, just straight down. You just gotta watch out. Oh, whoa, that at my input. And that, what? Okay, I'm actually having some issues with my Joy-Cons here. They just decided to eat, like, several inputs at a time, so that's not nice. Come on, Switch, play play, play ball. All right, so there's another... This is where I'm losing my weapon energy. Um, I should get about two-thirds back, and also when you complete a character section, usually it takes that weapon energy and rips it from, like, regenerating to actual um, stock in your tank. 
Right, so next character section, um, not much that's actually going to be going on really here. Um, this is pretty much a key fetch quest. Um, there's six keys in total that I need before I can get to the boss. I'm just going to push myself forward as best as I can by using my counter ability at certain points, which is um, indicated by my um, green meter underneath. And this will just help me nudge me a bit forward, just a little bit, just to save a few additional frames. All right, cool. It's also good for when you're in what the very few water sections there are because you actually use it just to help you push you through the water just that bit quicker. All right, so we've got all six keys in, so now we can start making our way to the boss of this area. Now, there's more than just the um, monster enemies that uh, can be bosses. There's also fellow MA pilots, the same as Jason. And we're about to run into our first turn, Gombe. Um, he's not too happy because we just kind of um, ran over his crops. And because he doesn't know who we are, he sees us as a threat. So I'm pretty much going to start off by getting into his face. He's going to get out of the field. When he comes back in, I'm going to counter him and um, try and take him down in at least two rounds. Joy Guns, cooperate. Okay, good. All right, so he finally sees that we are not a threat and we get the um, second counter attack, the S attacker. Um, unlike the gun counter, it all, once it does a successful counter, it will um, target towards that enemy and do a big long dash. However, we can use this to our advantage in certain areas by just using it as just a general dash just to speed things through. Of course, we are limited down by the green meter that we have. Um, when we're in the character sections under my um, under my other weapon edges, we come into here. It'll be a good little example as we go speak to um, Gombe again, and he'll give us our next upgrade, the um, wall jump, which helps with saving weapon energy throughout the course of the run. It's also required in this area to be able to um, hit the switches that are against the walls. All right, so we're pretty much done with this half of uh, montage. We now have the second half to go, which is where we actually needed the wall jump to even um, make it across. All right. All right, so pretty much optimized to go through this section is a combination of using the meter as well as a couple of wall jumps here and there just to try and conserve as much of my special meter as I can at certain points. Um, at this early point, it's not as major, but for later parts of the run, it can be quite, um, quite impactful. All right, okay, just watch ourselves here. And we've got a bunch of switches on here that we need to hit. I don't know why I decided to hover there, but we did. Okay. I uh, just have to watch out for that mini brain there. Uh, for the rest of that maze, I'm just going to ignore it and just fly over everything. And as mentioned with the Gaia system, as I'm very low, I'm going to take a big giant fall from this point on. And bang, we have our special meter back up. We come into the next character section. Optimizing as best I can with my dashes and just to make sure that I don't inadvertently counter enemies is some of the best ways to get through this. It is another bit of a key fetch quest, but there's a bit more movement going on involved with this next screen. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of a safety just to be sure that I don't um, let my weapon energy go too low. Because weapon energy in this game is pretty useful. The more weapon energy you have, the more weapons you have at your disposal. And we at least need weapon energy level at 4 for the majority of the run. For certain bosses that are weak to the um, level 4 weapon, which is this um, little orb thing here. This is a heat-seeking heat seeking shot. Otherwise, most of um, what is advantageous is with the um, stinger shot which is usually very optimal against single targets at rapid pace when you're right in their face. But yeah, we was warned about this creature that was amongst this arena as we now run into Zavira. Now, he has a few multiple different patterns he could take. And um, this is a good one. This is your spin around circles. He'll stop at some point. I'll counter him. Double, double stun weakness and we'll just end the fight right now. And that gets us the key to our next arena. But first, we now need to get off the island. I mean, it's nothing to really worry about. I mean, we had a nice, a nice empty screen that we had just a moment ago. So, I mean, we could just cruise through and oh. Oh. That's what Gumbe was talking about. This is the real fight. This is Gabavira. So, Gabavira only has one weakness, which is, on his, which is right at the top. It's that crystal. Once you do enough damage to him, the doors on four different points of, of him. Oh, hello. Four different points of him will um, open up. Then you need to go to East Door, and each of them will have a different um, group of um, Zaviras that we that we need to take down. Um, these Zaviras are actually weaker than the Gold Zavira that we took on first. So there's going to be a 
bit of um, back and forth with these guys. Uh, right, same pattern again, so this one should be pretty quick. Okay, one's a down. Now, for the first two um, rooms that I'll be entering, there are these block those blocks in the corners that do have some replenishment, should I need them. Or depends on what patterns he give me, we'll, we'll um, determine which pattern, um, which blocks I'll end up going for. For the final two, um, I won't have much of a choice. It'll just be um, one empty room and one with some spike room that I'll have to work with. Also, um, Severa just multiplied, so now we've got two heads to work with. So, once again, it depends what I give him. They give me the same pattern every time, so... Oh, wow, got, okay, got both of them with one, so this should be pretty much down. So that was very good luck. Um, when they spin like that, if you happen to counter one of them, but both of them are in that vicinity, it will stun, it will hit and do a double stun, or stun on both. Then we can go straight into um, doing a double stun, and then just put him down, just like that. Right, two more doors. So now I have no more replacements that I could pick up. So as long as I keep my weapon energy above four, we should be able to get this fight done pretty quickly. All right, slow crawl. So just get out the way. Oh, double slow crawl. All right, and I'm missing my hand position to um, get what I want. All right, we'll work with what we got. All right, so with this, because two, because um, one of the heads is too far away, I don't want to stun all three, because that will stop me from potentially getting all three down in quick. Plus, it will stop me from doing double stun, which you've stunned them at least once. At least the next time you go for a stun, it's with the same thing. It will, it won't actually stun them in position. So when they're spread out, when you get one head that spreads out like that. It tends to be better to just stick with two and then get a double hitter on um, on the final one when you get the opportunity. So this is just like the last one, except there's spikes everywhere. All right, once again. All right, got me got me grip right this time. Where are we going? Where are we going? All right. All right, teleports. So once he stops, he'll shake. Counter, double stun. And that's Zavira down, and we're just left with finishing off Gavavira by just pumping a few more um, bullet shots to the head. Uh, that'll be Gavavira down. Not bad RNG, to be fair. I mean, did the previous Blaster Masters, well, uh, something I, may not, I haven't mentioned at this point, uh, normally we don't do like um, shots and special, special weapon to actually, um, oh, to actually do more damage. The thing is, you can only really trigger off one offense at a given time. So that makes it a little awkward when it comes to um, to getting the attack. So it's usually better just to get in his face and just um, rap rapid fire your, um, oh my, ser seriously, Joy-Cons. <laughs> wow, my jump button does not like me. That's made things interesting. All right. At least we're not dying, so that's a good thing. All right, so yeah, it's pretty much just now just making our way out of montage to set up ready for the um, next planet that we're going to be visiting. All right, we are out. I'm telling you, Joy-Con, stop it. <laughs> yeah, how often do you get to watch a speed run where someone's just randomly having a go at equipment? Probably quite often, actually. <laughs> Right, Eve's doing fine, everything is good. Now into area C, um, L229 um, ship thing, I forgot his name. <laughs> so with this arena, there's a quite a few long corridors, and there is a good reason for that, which we will see um, when I get nearer to that section. However, um, we are going to basically be followed by this big giant robot thing. All right, so what he does, he'll basically fire off these arm cannons. Um, for now, he'll just fire off the one which will start to move, uh, must move across the screen. We need them so we can um, break down these um, red laser barriers that are preventing us from progressing. Fortunately, we can actually just sort of hover up and um, put the, line them up in position ready. You can even fire behind them, which will also come into play with one of the screens in particular to um, speed them up. I have no idea why, I just decided to hit the jump button there. But yeah, unfortunately, there's not much really going at this point. Um, with one of the next screens, we, he'll be coming back in, but he'll be using a um, different arm cannon to start with. He'll actually be using an arm cannon that fires and does not move over into position. Oh. So um, we have so to help us speed things up, we have to uh, basically fire the cannon from behind in order to um, get it to move across and break the red barriers that we want. We could get a refill here. Alright, so we break that barrier down. Um, after I get past this room, 
There's going to be one that's a slightly bit, that's going to be trickier, especially with the way my Joy Gods are going, where I'm going to be trying to hover up to position him in the air, and then I'm actually going to um, fire whilst hovering up in the air with it to try and break both of the red barriers at a given time. Yeah, Joy-Con. Joy-Con decided to give up on me there. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so we'll have to go with someone else. So instead, I'll just have to force him up and do it that way. Hey, how you doing, Bobo? Yeah, this this particular room is just pretty much move across. Um, he won't ever get in the way of me. Uh, but whilst we are in this arena, we also need to pick up a key for something that's going to be popping up quite a bit later on in the run for Area D. So we actually don't visit Area D for a while. But we're going to need that key later for actual completion. Just take a couple of intentional hits there, just so we can get just about behind him and... Um... Ooh, okay, come on. Come on! <laughs> oh, bad positioning, but the idea there is to try and get in between both of the um, sets of blocks. So you can actually destroy both sets of blocks with one individual shot each time. Does help quite a bit um, get, making that climb, unfortunately. A um, little bit of a botch. No. <laughs> Leave me alone. Alright, so for these, these flame things, we'll just... We essentially just take the damage, it's just quicker than waiting around for them. Don't worry, these long corridors will not be a problem at some point. Trust you and me, we'll get there. We'll get in there. More robot arm. And again, just manipulate it into a position. Just get him to go forward. Then carry on. All right, so we're, we're almost at the end of this stretch. Just have this. We have one more arm cannon after this. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Curved a little early there. <laughs> it's fine. My weapon energy is where I want it to be at least, so there's no toys. So I'm just jumping in spot just to move it up just a little bit and just down little shots underneath, force him up, keep a bit of my weapon energy going as we now enter our next character section, which is just one boss. Bit of a... Um, not much of what you can do in terms of um, speeding the fight up realistically, but this is um, Unknown Cell 42. There's going to be green news that's going to be coming out from either the left, right, or from up top, or even in one or two instances from both a combination of left and right. We need to destroy these um, orbs, I guess I'll put it. But luckily they drop a lot. They drop um, grenade weapons, so we could actually use that to our advantage and be able to just use the grenades to um, speed up the fight just a little bit. Um, from which direction the use come from, the positioning of these orbs will always be the same. It's just as the fight goes on, the the time of which they actually appear will just speed up, speed up as we go. So, oh, forgot you. All right, cool. So yeah, double sided. But yeah, we always gonna have the same pattern. So I know that's only gonna be one side. Just keep restocking our grenades as best as we can as we go through. Oh, nice. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, actually. <laughs> Lucky. Oh. All right, so for the final phase, whichever side they come out of, it will always be in the same position, but they just like to do a little bit of a dance. And that is Unknown Cell. As we now go ahead and pick up one of my personal favorite um, equipment in this game, the um, burn ability, which I'm going to bind straight away to my side. And... Um, Basically what this does is speed things up, as we can now burn as a blazing corridor all the way through. Um, obviously we need to use this as well as we can in conjunction with what weapon energy we have. So we can't just outright abuse it. But as long as, as, long as it's used, um, used well, then you can pretty much just blaze through a lot of the corridors from this point on and for the remainder of the run. Just making sure to pick up a little bit of energy there. And it's also useful, it's also used to break down these red barriers. Now the um, that robot guy has suddenly disappeared. Um, he probably had enough. I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh, hello. All right, my weapon energy is running a little low. I do not want it to run out flat because otherwise I'll have to wait around a little bit here. So I'll just make sure I've got enough to get in here. And now we come up to our area C boss. 
Um, defend them all. The robot's been done stalking us, so he's now going to take us on head on. That purple shield that was around him is going to be coming in this as well, which we need to use the burn ability to break down. And then we're just going to pretty much get up there and just get in his face and just hopefully annihilate him. Ah, I mistimed that a bit, but we should still be fine. All right, down. So just a few more shots. And he's out. All right, that gives us the key to area E, if I remember rightly. Yeah, fully enough, even though area D is next in line, that's actually a, a planet we're not going to, or an area we're not going to be visiting until a little bit later on. So now we're pretty much just, oh, oh, get out. Oh, that's not good. Blocks, you troll me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to have to play a little bit safe with my weapon energy. Right, I actually do want it to run out at that point. Because it's, otherwise it's going to be a bit awkward. I can just take two hits from these enemies instead. That'll get my weapon energy back up and um, exactly where I want it to be to make the final stretch out of here. It's a bit low, so a little hop, bang, and we are done. Now this is where things get weird. <coughs> Area E planet. Things are not what they seem. You're right there, Eve? Yeah, she seems happy. We're good. Welcome to Stranger. Now, as I say, nothing is what it seems. You'll find like enemies that have these flowers on their head that don't do anything really. And then you'll also find health and weapon energy pickups that actually turn out to be enemies. There's even safe pads that will get up and shoot a big uh, big laser at you. So yeah. Oh, come on, buttons work. So, yeah, everything, don't trust what you see anywhere, just try not to die, basically. <laughs> and then there's things like this, where you think the tank would be much more powerful to deal with the um, oncoming threat, but it turns out you get out your tank and just use um, Jason's little pea shooter, it one-shots them. If you try using the tank, it takes forever. Unfortunately, they always spawn in the same spots, so once we see them, get up. We could pretty much just put them down and make a move on. All right, so we're going to be coming up to our n one of our next bosses. Um, it's actually going to be another MA pilot. Um, the tank we're going by the name of Ear, and she can be quite a pain if she wants to be. There's a couple of attacks that she could do, and I'm hoping for a certain RNG, otherwise it's going to be a problem. But I'll basically want to just get shots in and, da and burn dash through her as she comes and charges at me. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. That's really not what I wanted to see. Oh, that's really what I not wanted to see. That is one of the more annoying um, attacks that she could do. Unfortunately, I botched there. I had the opportunity to finish it, but unfortunately, I mispositioned my um, my strike. So unfortunately, we'll have to um, go again. Thankfully, I hit the save pad just to be safe. Oh, where's she? All right, that's what I want to see. Because I could easily go back and forth with this, pump a few shots in, and she's down. RNG nut, my friend. But she's going to give us access to our next equipment term, the drill. Which, it, which, normally when you go through this, it only actually really gets used for um, these um, bricks here to destroy them. However, there is another use we use them for, and. It may, it's a bit weird to think that it's actually pretty powerful against certain bosses, but that will be um, coming up at some point soon. But for now, we're just doing a little side thing that that, uh, that pilot wanted us to do. Um, we need to get three seeds in order to um, make her happy. She'll um, fix us up a little something that should help our um, fellow co-pilot Eve pretty much just keep her going whilst this uh, mutant virus is currently taking over her. So as you see, a bit weird. I'll leave my tank behind, and a big flower decides to pick it up and take it with him. Now we're supposed to have an upgrade to be able to spring through up here, but because I've turned my um, dive gear off, I can actually jump through it and be able to hover out. Unfortunately, this means I need to use a different means to get this seed to where I want it to be. Well, I'm so happy my Joy-Cons chose not to mess up at that point. So pop that in, give it a little water, and there's our first fruit. 
All right, so moving over to the next section, to the next fruit that we need. It's got a little bit of backtracking. On t Whoa, hello. <laughs> I don't remember pressing that button, thank you. All right, good. Some quick drills there. Some bad jumping there. All right, so this one we don't need to actually plant a seed for. We just need to get over there and um, basically just collect it. Fortunately, even with the dive gear off, when you um, use the burn attack during during water, it will just um, stay within the water. So it's, all, so it's always a good thing, that. All right, so I'm hopefully I won't fall through the floor. Good. That can be a concern. Sometimes you'll drill through that and it just goes through all the blocks and you're in a bit of trouble. All right. So break that bone out. And, and here we go. Some of the lily pad. And now this flower decides to grow big giant legs and little flicky toes there. So as I say, this planet is very, very, very weird. So I mean, first time playing this, I was like, what? All right. So again, I'm going to try and get the hover up with this, um, with the seed. Oh, dropped it. Okay, I'm just going to trigger him. Just get rid of him. Oh, come on. Joy-Cons, please cooperate. <laughs> oh, okay, cooperated there, but I just went a bit too early. All right, there we go, finally. Well, the way this world's going, I may switch to a pro controller one day. <laughs> All right, so there's our final one. We can start making our way back over to um, to the air tank. No, seriously, game. I may have to hold the controllers up a little higher because it really is not. <laughs> it doesn't want to register for some reason. All right, so we're back here <laughs> and drop up, drop a seat. She also gives us a planetoid map. Now, planetoids is um, usually for collecting um, additional goodies, additional weapons and such. However, this is one of this is one of the few within the uh, within the early areas that actually require it, where there's going to be a boss within it, and we actually need it need it to get access to our next area. Right, good. Just what? Just got to be a bit sparing with my weapon energy. Depends on what drops the enemies give me. That's pretty good, so I can pretty much burn through a good portion of this next section, just to get back over to the tank. Well, get to back over to the tank. Get back over to the um, the pad that will allow, which will allow me to um, leave the area. All right. So, stranger is now done. Area ref time. Now, area ref is actually split into two different sections. Um, the planet known as um, Divido. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot I got this planetoid, which decided it likes to fly around a bit. So, need to quickly catch that. So, we'll put Divido on hold for now. I kind of got ahead of myself. So, skeleton boss, you're back. Except there's three of you. Wait, what? <laughs> All right, so this is um, this is Cerebos. boss. Remember that drill we got? Watch what it can do if my controller can operate. <laughs> oh, they're roaring. They're roaring. Stop roaring. All right, one more. And down. So yeah, the drill the drill itself isn't actually that powerful, but the rocks that it um, leaves behind is and can do some serious damage to certain bosses. All right, off we go. Now we could go and talk about Area F. Um, Divido, it's split into two sections, um, a desert and ice arena. Um, it's going to be divided by this um, electrical line where if you end up hitting it, it's an instant death. And with the way my joy cons are going, that could be a thing. <laughs> so, uh, again, it's going to be a combination of using my burn and just timing a jump um, correctly in order to ensure that um, I don't basically die. <laughs> so I really don't want to hit that big electrical field that's just above me. Hey, pull back. Don't go too crazy. Alright. Alright, so far so good. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I 
I, I felt as though I was going to fall into that electrical field. <laughs> right, so we're going to be taking a slight bit of a detour in a sec, just to grab um, a key that we need to get out of um, get out of um, area F through it. Another means by this um, this lovely lady here, who happens to be the co-pilot for another MA pilot, goes by the name At or goes by the tank name Atom. Um, she's a little trapped. Um, Atom's going to try and help her out as best as, she, as best as he can, but for now, we're just going to um, remember where we're going. Up here? No, not up here. Oh, no, no. Go, 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 go. Huh. All right, change of plan. We'll return to the tank, and we'll just take for the floor. How's that work? All right, so now we're actually in the other side of the, uh, the, other side of, um, the Vida, which is usually... You're not supposed to be able to get there through this means. That's where the um, that key that I just picked up is, is used for primarily. But for now, we'll use it there. We'll just save it for when we get done with this bit. All right, so try not to... Um, all right, because of the way my Joy-Cons are, I'm going to take this a little safe. Okay, good. <laughs> and as I say that, my Joy-Cons decided to give me trouble. Oh. Weapon energy, need it back. Yeah, I don't want to risk trying to jump up there without any hover or dash, because I could end up inadvertently catching that field. All right, bit of a bounce there, fall down, get our weapon meter ready. And now we see run to Atom. Now, his communications in his tank is actually malfunctioning. So he can't hear us saying, hey, we're, we're allies, don't go for us. He sees us as a threat, so he's going to go for us. So, again, we're going to be using the drill as best we can. Unfortunately, he's giving me a bad pattern straight off the bat. Oh, well, yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm not too sure um, where we're going to go with this. Oh. All right, never mind. Right, we'll work with this. All right, we've got a bit of damage. Um, when he reaches a certain pain threshold, he can use an additional attack, which we really don't want to run into. It doesn't look like he's reached that threshold yet, so I'm going to take this moment while he goes back and forth. When he when he puts his shield up, he it will stay up for at least three different attacks. Um, I may miss out on this. Okay, we're going to have to go a third round. I've got to be very careful now, because this is where the big attack can come in. All right, we should be good to finish him off. Alright, there we go. Unfortunately, we missed, missed out getting a two-rounder on him, but at least he didn't defeat us. So we can at least move on with that. And that big BB gave us, well, becomes a bit of an ally to us now. But first, I'm going to take a retry. This is going to replenish both my um, health and my um, special. It's also going to regenerate some enemies along the route, which I'm going to use to be able to um, get certain additional um, weapon energy meter as I go. But first, let me, let, well, okay, let me get the right weapon equipped. And then we'll use this. We could charge it up by um, doing a few shots and then boom. <laughs> Big beam. And yeah, that full excel burst we need to use to break down certain doors and things. But we can use it to our advantage um, in one or two instances. So it can be, it can be very, very nice. <laughs> I thought I was going to fall then. <laughs> Right, so we got the area F2 key so we can enter through here. We need to be in area D's while we picked up the key earlier on. And we need to be in area D specifically for this boss fight. Um, we have one more MA pilot to take on. Uh, MA pilot, or well, the MA um, Garuda, sorry. But he's um, he's got a bit of an agenda, which you do f sort of hear things about a bit later. But this boss fight has one of four patterns he can do, which is determined by the light string that he um, puts off in the air. Depends on which pattern he gives me, I could potentially one round him. Uh, might be able to with this one. No, fortunately, he got a bit away from me, right. So that's one of the attacks, so I'm going to have to wait for him again. All right, he's gone in the air, unfortunately. That, fa that attack is good if it's on round one, but for round two, unfortunately, not so good. All right, he's going along the ground, we could use the drill to our advantage here. And okay, there we go, he's down. Three rounds, that's subpar to a degree, but unfortunately, RNG will be what RNG will be. So with him down, we can now use the Area D key to exit through this way and um, loop back around to the desert side via the, via the portals that we took originally. All 
Alright, so try not to get hit here, Turkey. Okay, I've got a little lower on my weapon energy than I would have liked. Because I need you need to actually have full weapon energy in order to use the Follic Cell Burst. Now I'm going to tr try and get something here where I'm actually going to delay my entry to the door and the orb happens to screen wrap and break down two doors for me, saving me having to regenerate my meter and then charge through. We now enter this character section. Um, now with this area, there's usually um, a bunch of like um, blocks that are gonna, that you need to um, put, get up to um, obstruct these uh, ice or water and um, sand flows, which can be, oh, wrong weapon, which can be a bit of a pain. And this area can take some time, well, this street can take some time to get through. Unfortunately, we, with the ability of our um, dash encounter, we could sort of, we could kind of cheese it a little bit. As we'll just be able to dash all the way through, I'll get wait for just one more charge, and we can just outright just skip the entirety of the section and start making our way to our next boss, uh, Big di uh, Dig Roller, sorry. Um, dig Roller, out of any of the bosses for me, I would say, is probably one of the more RNG bosses that can really drain your time if he wants to. So it's really going to be up to him. Um, um, hopefully, the main thing we want to see is him open his mouth as many times as he can. He can also shimmy in place to cause some rocks to start falling. Or he could just do, the, do a attack, like an, an eye attack where the best I could do is just counter it so he doesn't actually get any offense in. So hopefully a bit of good RNG might get somewhere with him. Okay, open mouth, that's fine. And we use the whip. Well, the, oh, wow, I missed both of them. But switch to the whip just in case those orbs come out. Now when the orbs come out, the whip, we could use the flight grenades to knock them, but it, they can knock them to the sides or whatnot. Whereas with the whip, it will always knock it directly forward. Oh, hello! <laughs> Alright, oh, he's gone again. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Okay, he's opened his mouth. I'm not too sure where I'm going to be weapon energy wise, so... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, a bit of battery there, but we are alive, and fortunately, I have the weapon type energy that I actually would like for the next area, for the next thing, because you want to switch back to Seeker now for not the next thing that's going to come up, but the thing after that. Unfortunately, because that, my weapon energy has been knocked a bit lower than I would like, this is going to pretty much mean um, I'm going to have less leniency in order to keep that weapon energy where I want to. So hopefully, oh, hopefully things will go well. But that is Divido done. And we are in the final area. We're going to be entering the final area of the game, Area G. Now, um, Area G is, simply put, remember what you did earlier? Time to do it again. <laughs> At least it's a certain aspect. So first thing we've got is a refight with Garuda. Um, in terms of his differences, there really isn't that much different that he does. He'll still have the same four patterns that he can do. The only difference mainly is he can pull up a shield. And if he does end up doing that, that could make things um, go a little bit longer. Uh, he's gone with the same pattern. All right, so there's his shield. I've got a good amount of damage, though. Hopefully, he doesn't do take the sky route. He do oh, it looks like he's going to take the exact same pattern that he did first round. So hopefully, he'll go across the ground next. Nope, he's going to swoop. So hopefully, he should come right above me. And yeah, okay. So another free rounder. We'll take it. And he will give us the map to the next planetoid. So this this area, for the most part, is pretty much um, different planetoids offering a different set of challenges. The first one was the rematch with Garuda. The next planetoid is going to be a boss rush rematching with three bosses that we've already taken on from tank sections in particular. Although the first boss is a bit more like character section, to be, on, in my, to be honest, in my view. But you thought he was down. He's back again. Welcome, Gavavira, round two. So we'll try and get through this critical. Unfortunately, not much more can really add on to um, what I said about the fight prior. So I'll try and get through this as good as I can. Right. So crystal down, enter in, first door. So, yep, once again, we've got one Zavavir ahead. Um, I will say there is not as much stock that's laying around. Okay, I got slow first. That's actually quite good for me if this all triggers off well. Because if you've got to your slow, at least with the one head at the first phase, you could just do a single stun with your orbs, 
as long as your mashing time or your speed with your offense is quick enough, you can take him down without him going into another offense. Seriously, Joy-Cons. Well, I swear, most of this run has been, seriously, Joy-Cons. They didn't give me this much trouble last time. <laughs> All right, good, round two, and I managed to get a weapon energy. Thankfully, if, if in those sections where you get trying to get weapon energy or something like that, if he does the teleport, you do have a bit of time to be able to try and grab one before we... Um... Oh, oh! <laughs> Swing and a miss. Now that I can't blame on Joy-Cons. <laughs> All right, what are we going to do? All right, he's going to cycle me, okay? Um, I probably shouldn't have gone for all three. He's probably going to get away. Yeah. Luckily, I've got a lot of damage in there, so it wasn't too bad. Right, we've still got one more round to go. Seriously, come on. Right, teleports, where are we going? May not get this one because the um, controls decided to go again. Alright, so that's pretty much the refight down with Gabavira. We just gotta pop that crystal off his head and we're good to go. That's uh, probably ain't gonna work if I do that. It's probably gonna feel too weird. I'm gonna just move back a bit, see if that does anything. Um, sorry, I was just wanted to make sure I went out of weapon, e weapon energy there, because I wanted to get the replacement going as I'm waiting for this fight to happen, or this fight to charge up. So, first time around, we use the drill to our advantage. This time, we're gonna do something a little different. <laughs> As it turns out, this full XL burst is pretty good against him. Oh my, come on! Will you work? <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's basically just one shotter that'll take him down. And now we go to our final refight. Technically, not a refight because it's actually a different name. So welcome to Defend Them All's um, highly competitive, uglier brother, um, in Venomal. Same boss fight, different name. Alright. And that's the that's that boss rush done. And now we have one more planetoid to go for the um, character section boss rush. Um, for this though, um, there's a couple of the boss bosses in there that we actually haven't come across um, as it's um, not actually a part of the any percent run. So, here comes our first one, uh, Mighty Mine Might. Now, on a successful counter, it will always bring him to the centre of the screen. So, hopefully, if he wants to cooperate and um, let me counter him. There we go, eventually. And then just... Oh, apparently I'm saving a picture, and, yeah, Joy-Cons are really not liking me today. Okay, I have to sell for a two-rounder. We'll have to try and figure that out before the next run I do. <laughs> Alright, on to boss... Rematch number two. Unknown Cell 46 is back. So once again, it's um, just pretty much um, following with whether, whichever side wall he wants to go with and just taking these orbs out as best as we can. Get some grenade stock up while I'm here. Wow, <laughs> swing and a miss.
Where's he going? Top. Please. May I help? I know what's going on. Right. Oh yeah, weird thing there. If you get a successful count, if you get a successful counter on one of the orbs, you sort of don't take damage in his ooze. I'm not fully sure why that is, but it can be a thing. All right, so unknown cell is down, and finally we well we got two more. Sorry. Um, next up, uh, Mokrantula. Hey, got you. So yeah, once again, same combina same combination. Um, double stun him to finish him off. All right, so now we enter the um, the final matchup in this um, planetoid. As he's done getting out, as he's, as he's done with um, taking us on in his pilot ship, the Garuda. Welcome to Leibniz, the pilot of the Garuda. Now, during the commercial playthrough of this, this boss fight can get pretty, pretty crazy. But if we can get four successful counters, we can pretty much. Um, Pretty much end him. <laughs> okay, so that's our final map to take us to the final boss of this game. Um, he does give us a bit of information during that as well, though, as we've been on the way trying to get something. It turns out it's through this planet, uh, but it's been taken over by an entity known as Planada G. However, we were warned that if we destroy it, the worst will come to pass. But we can't just leave it around. So we've got to take him down. So time's going to be on the final strike of this boss. And as it turns out, the guy system that we've been using to replenish our weapon energy throughout this is actually his weakness. There's going to be different enemies that could spawn on. It's a different pattern and of how it can happen. Uh, not the pattern, not the one I would like to see, ideally. But we'll take it for now. So hopefully I don't... Oh, I've got to get off those platforms so I can um, hurt Panada, please. Right, so I'm going to try and get him down to a certain point in health. And then I'm going to try and get as high as I can to get a much higher drop, which will deal more damage. Because once he reaches a certain pain threshold, he will start to uh, to scroll across the bottom of the screen. So I'm hoping there'll be a platform inside. But you know what? That'll do. So I've got a good amount of damage there. He may replenish health by taking out these enemies. So I'm just going to take a couple of these enemies out while I can. Final hit may be on the next strike. So get oh no, it should be... Probably on the third one of these. So time is. Oh, he got away! He got away! No! All right, we have to go another round. Come yeah, in! Come back! Come back! And time. <laughs> so we saved. We did it. Panada G is down, and we could get Eve to a nice to a nice home planet and get her back. Unfortunately, Leibniz was right and the worst has come to pass. Sorry, Eve. So yeah, that was any percent of Blaster Master Zero Two. Um, hope you had a good time, hope you enjoyed yourself with that. Um, if you're looking for any more um, Blaster Master um, fun, um, I would like to be back with a couple from Blaster Master Zero with both Shanta, EX character Shantae and EX character Gunvolt, actually, which reminds me, um, uh, the EX Gunbolt one has been moved from 10 a.m. to 11.15, I believe. So, um, yeah, with that being said, take care and have a good night.